Hey peeps, I hope you guys are all just doing great. For this chat chat, we're taking you all the way to Philadelphia, to University of Pennsylvania. And with me today on the show is a sophomore from University of Pennsylvania, Krish Mehta. Hey, hey guys. Krish, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. So, as you mentioned, um, Penn is located in Philadelphia. Um, the school size, I think the undergraduate size is around 2,400 people. Per year? Per year. Okay, per year. Okay. 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 So, it's sort of mid-sized. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly mid-sized school. Um, in the school, there are four main, I guess, schools. There's the School of Nursing, uh, the Business School, which is the Wharton School. Um, the School of Engineering and then the School of Arts and Sciences. Right. So pretty much amongst these four schools you'll find most undergraduates. Right. The campus itself is kind of located within the city but it's also its own thing. So you've got this neat little location where you're kind of in the pen bubble. Oh, okay. But you're also in Philadelphia. Pretty great. I love the place. It's, yeah. It's I'm both in the School of Engineering and the School of Arts and Sciences. So, Penn is kind of known for this and it's one of their things. Um, Penn prides itself in interdisciplinary learning. Okay. So, what students are kind of allowed to do is be a part of two schools. Uh, they call these programs dual degree programs. Right. So, you enrolled into a, a very well-known program called the Viper program. So, would you like to talk us through that? Yeah, sure. So what Viper is, is it's an energy research, it's an energy research focused program um, which is hosted both within the School of Arts and Sciences and the School of Engineering. Okay. So I myself, when I first enrolled, was studying physics in the School of Arts and Sciences and mechanical engineering in the School of Engineering. Okay. And that was kind of geared towards energy research. And I understand that you're moving out of that program into another uh, dual degree, is that correct? Yeah, so over this past summer, as part of the requirements of the Viper program, I was doing research um, at Penn. Uh, during my time doing research, I realized it wasn't really something that I enjoyed too much. Okay. And because of that, I decided to drop the Viper program. Okay. Okay. And now instead of physics and mechanical engineering, I'm studying economics and mechanical engineering. Okay, wow. Yeah, so it's still the same dual degree, it's yeah. just, I guess, different subjects. I guess that's, I always say this, that's the beauty of American education. Yeah. yeah you switch from physics to economics and how easy was the transition for you within college? Yeah, so it was actually really interesting in my case. So when I applied to Viper, it was kind of my dream program. Oh, okay. I personally applied early decision to Penn. Okay. And I was very much into what Viper was supposed to be. Okay, so all guns blazing. Yeah, it was, it was every, like, I don't know, like it was something I really, really wanted to do. Okay. So when I went in, I was super excited. I was like, this is great, this is awesome. But I think over time, I realized that, I don't know, it may not have been something I really enjoyed. Sure, sure. And like you said, that's the beauty of the American yeah, system. Yeah. That once you realize that this may not be something for you, it's really easy to transition to something, something else that you may enjoy. Sure. And I remember just like within one week, I had switched out of the Viper program and I'd enrolled into economics and it was just that quick. Wow, wow. Which is only fair because at 16 you really wanted to do an energy yeah. research and at 19 you don't want to do it is only fair. <laughs> So Krish, there could be some high school freshmen watching this show at 15, 16 years of age I hope. thinking that they are really, really sure about what they want to do when they get to college. But from your experience, what advice would you want to give them? Yeah, I'd definitely say go into college kind of with an open mind. I mean, at least that's the way I approached it and I think it really helped me out. And just go in and be prepared to try new things. And as long as you do that, I'm sure you'll have a good time. Okay. So, <laughs> I kind of over-enrolled myself. Um, <laughs> which I actually thought was great because it I is. got to meet a lot of new people and yeah. try a, new, a lot of different things. So I guess uh, one of the things I'm really proud of was uh, this conference that I kind of organized. Um, it was called the Penn Innovation Conference okay. and this was actually its first year. Um, we brought in startups mm -hmm. um, from all over the US to come in and kind of 
give guidelines and talks to people at Penn, to students. So one thing about the Penn culture is that it's very entrepreneurial. People right. are really engaged with innovation and that's something that Penn is really proud of. And this conference was kind of meant to streamline that process, basically help people with ideas kind of take it from the idea stage to an actual product. Wow. This Penn Innovation Conference that you spoke about sounds really exciting. And I'm thinking as a sophomore, how did you go about organizing this and calling in companies and all of that? Yeah, so it was actually really hard to begin with. Um, the way we kind of approached it was we contacted pretty much all the Penn alums who had any interesting startups that they were working on, okay. any interesting startups that you know they had. And because Penn alums were really receptive right. and they really tend to be so, we got a lot of traction being built. And then once we had startups coming, we could say that, oh, you know, these are these startups coming. And then we told Penn this and then they were willing to sponsor us. Oh, okay. And then we reached out to companies saying, oh, hey, we've got these startups. We have Penn backing us. Would you like to support us as well? And by the end of it, actually, we had startups reaching out to us saying, oh, hey, can we please come to your conference and wow, talk? Wow, that's a sign of success. I guess some other activities I'm involved with is uh, this engineering challenge that I'm doing. So what the Hyperloop basically is, is it's a new mode of transportation that was envisioned by Elon Musk. Elon Musk is basically an innovator, he's an entrepreneur and he's also my idol, fantastic guy. Um, so what the Hyperloop is, is it's a new mode of transportation that connects LA and San Francisco and it's supposed to be cheaper and more efficient than both a plane and a car. Mm -hmm. What's also really cool about it is that it runs on renewable energy. So what it kind of is, is you have a tube in which there's, it's almost a partial vacuum. And inside this vacuum, you have a capsule that kind of floats on air cushions and just goes from one end to the other like a hockey puck. So what the challenge basically was, was SpaceX launched this competition challenging engineers to build the pod that travels from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was like, fantastic. Yeah. So I jumped right into it and that's something I've been working on. Okay, so you've put your team together, has put up their entry into the competition? Yeah, so um, we've been competing in that contest. We will actually be presenting our design in Texas in around 20 days from now. Oh wow, so <laughs> wish you luck on it. Thank you coming up with a project, competing, and like you said, going into Texas, I'm sure that needed some funding, some support. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you, so the challenge was actually completely, I guess, arbitrary, in the sense that I was just looking over SpaceX's website and then I found it. And from there, we, like I kind of started off with making a team that fell through immediately. Oh, okay. I made another team that fell through immediately as well. Okay. And just iterative processes till we finally got something that worked. The only reason, to be quite honest, that we made it through this round is because of the support that we received from professors. Mm -hmm. Like there were a lot of professors, in fact probably the entire mechanical engineering department that knows about us and they've each contributed in their own way, like either given us advice or you know we've reached out to them with some technical difficulties and they've helped us out. Wow. And even in terms of funding, like you mentioned, they've been nice enough to sponsor our travel back and forth. So it's been great. I mean, they've been incredibly supportive and all we had to do was just come up with the initiative and they were there for us. Wow, because this is big. I'm sure for someone watching, for a school <laughs> fairly large sized as Penn, uh, for you to be able to make that breakthrough and make a mark, get people contributing personal time and resources, is, it speaks a lot about the college. If you have an idea of, if you have an inclination to do something, I can promise you that at Penn, you will find people to support you. Whether it's clubs, whether it's organizations, whether it's professors, you will find some sort of support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So apart from these, which are primarily related to your major in some way, are you involved in any other activities on campus as well? Yeah, so I'm involved with the consulting club as well. Okay. Um, at Penn, consulting is kind of a big thing and it's also something I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. Consulting is actually a career path that I may be looking at in the future. So that's definitely something that I've really been heavily involved with. So Krish, Penn has this social IV tag <laughs> and how true is it? 
I guess it's fairly true. I mean, I've visited a few other IVs, not to name Howard, Columbia, but you know, Penn is slightly more fun. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, Penn is, it's a pretty social place. Uh, the people you'll find there are really the kind of people who'll study for five days in a week, like go study really incredibly hard. And then for two days of the week, I just, having more fun than imaginable just the whole day we'll just go and having fun and it's quite incredible like i don't know how it's sustainable but people are just going to do it so for a student who's probably sitting on the fence not so sure about entering greek life is it a good place to be for him um it kind of depends from person to person um in my case i know that i get distracted pretty easily and i know that if i'm surrounded by that kind of a culture i would kind of just flake off on whatever i'm doing so I decided against joining Greek life, but again, I know a lot of people who are incredibly smart, who are involved with Greek life and still manage to do pretty well academically. So it's just about how well you can balance the two lives. So how would you say Penn is different from all the other IVs? Uh, Penn students in general are the kind of people who, you know, like as I mentioned earlier, really go hard to party and really work hard. I'd say Penn is a great place for someone who really likes both sides of, you know, the spectrum. Who can go out three or four times a week and at the same time really do well academically and it's quite amazing how, you know, you can do that. But that's the typical Penn student and I think that's the biggest difference from the other IVs. Philadelphia is such a vibrant city to live in. So how do you engage with the city as students? Yeah, so um, Penn is actually fairly close to downtown. but about, I guess, 20 streets away from downtown. So you end up going there pretty often. Philadelphia itself and even around Penn's campus, there are tons and tons of restaurants. Like, oh, okay. The food there is awesome. Like, it's nice, it's cheap, and it's a great place to just hang out. Um, downtown itself, like, People usually go around once a week, or maybe even more often than that. Yeah, so what's your favorite food? Oh, oh, Mexican. <laughs> I love Mexican food, okay. and there's tons of it there, so I'm really happy. Okay. Um, another thing that Philadelphia is known for are its food trucks, okay. which are basically, you know, like, move, like it's kind of like a hawker stand that you'd have here. Right. The food there is fantastic. And they so sort of good. line up outside Line college. up outside. You have like, there are like 40 just on Penn's campus. You can get all the food you want just from food trucks and it's really cheap and it's amazing. Okay, so tell us the most fun experience you've had <laughs> on campus. Um, so during my freshman year, uh, we had actually gone out and then we came back and we were all just sitting in my lounge. Like this was with all my hallmates. And there was this roll of duct tape in front of us. I was like, hmm. So I kind of asked my friends to duct tape me against a wall. You asked for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of, you know, in the mood to do that. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. But we took like six rolls of duct tape and they stuck me against a wall. And then when I was finally done, I was just completely frozen, standing like that. Jesus Christ. And then my friends being lovely as they are, they just left me alone. They just walked away from me. And I was like, whoa, 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 guys, I need to get out of here. But that was, that was a lot of fun. That sounds like fun. <laughs> hey, but you know, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing all this with our viewers. I'm sure they're definitely going to look at Penn in a new light after this video. No, it was my pleasure. And I really hope they do. Like, Penn's a great place and I've loved every minute of it. So I really encourage them to think about it. But yeah, it's been great talking to you. Thank you. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle, ChatChat101, or at Instagram, ChatChat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.